Australian officials won't say if the hostage crisis Monday was ISIS-related, even though the gunmen reportedly forced captives to display a flag similar to the one used by ISIS. At the very least, the gunman seems to be politically motivated. He reportedly demanded a meeting with Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott, who has been a major backer of the U.S.-led campaign against ISIS. Where possible retaliation, Australia has beefed up its national security apparatus in recent months, rolling out a series of counterterrorism laws in August. The threat remained. Shortly after, horrifying images emerged showing the son of an Australian ISIS militant holding the head of a decapitated Syrian soldier. Then, for the first time since the system was introduced back in 2003, Australia raised its terror threat level from medium to high. Raising the alert level to high is designed to raise awareness. Two days later, Australia committed 600 troops to the international coalition fighting the militants. And that same week, Australian security forces arrested 15 people in what they called the biggest counterterrorism raid in the country's history. In October, in its English language magazine, ISIS named Australia as one of the five main targets for terrorist attacks. Soon after, this chilling warning from an Australian teenager surfaced. These soldiers, we will not stop fighting on top of Buckingham Palace until we put the black flag on top of the White House. We will not stop and we will keep on fighting and we will fight you. Rattled by the terror threats, Australia banned its citizens from traveling to ISIS's stronghold, the Syrian province of Raqqa. Which brings us to today. Reports suggest the Sydney siege is the work of a single individual without direct ties to any organized terrorist groups. And therein lies the problem. No matter how much Australia steps up its security, as other governments have learned, lone wolf attacks are nearly impossible to prevent. This summer, security experts at the Sufan Group estimated at least 200 Australians were fighting for ISIS in Syria. For Newsy, I'm Elizabeth Hagedorn, multiple sources, a broader view.